Hi everybody, it's Jonathan here, and we're going to pick up right where we left off from last time. And I'm really excited because in this video we're finally going to get going on creating a special purple brick, which will do some cool things when it's destroyed, but in this video we are going to make it explode into multiple balls when it gets hit, and those balls will be able to destroy, to destroy other bricks, but they will not cause you to lose any lives when they fall off the screen. So let's get right into it. Go into your sprites folder, and the first thing we're going to need to do is make a couple of new prefabs. So make an extra copy of the ball, and take the zero hit sprite for the brick, and put that in the field somewhere. And move it into place with the snap settings. And we're basically going to make it more or less the same as a regular brick with a different color. So put, give it a different color. I'm using purple. You can use whatever you'd like. And we're going to add the same things as on the other ones, which is a box collider 2D that is not a trigger. It is not a trigger uh, collider. And it is also going to have the brick script. That makes sense. And finally up here where it says tags, we're going to create a new tag for this brick and we're going to call it special. So add a tag and type special and then go back onto that brick and add that special tag on. And then once you've done all that, you can also rename it special and turn this brick into a prefab, which I'm going to do over here. No, don't replace, just add it in. There we go. Next, take the new ball and you're gonna do more or less the same thing with it. So I'm just gonna zoom in so I can see it a little better and do the same type of things here. I'm gonna rename this to extra ball and we're gonna put the same components on as is on the regular ball, which in this case is, I'll put the ball script on last, but we're gonna put a rigid body 2D on here. Uh, this one, is we're gonna leave that more or less the same as well. And then we're going to put a circle collider 2D on. Oops, what did I do? Did it go on? I think I pressed the wrong button. Circle collider 2D, there we go, add it on there. And in this case, it's asking for a material, which we put on the regular ball and we're gonna put on this one as well. So go to the materials folder and drag that material on, which basically makes it bouncy. And what else did we have on there? We had the ball script. Was there anything else? I uh, just checked the other ball just to be safe. Oh, it had an audio clip as well with the boing sound, so we'll get that on there as well. But it did have the rigid body and it had the circle collider. So yes, yeah, so let's just add that audio source as well with the boing sound. So get that on there too. Audio source, asking for a clip. Here's the boing sound, and I'm going to turn that volume way down on it. And once again, we'll just turn this into a prefab. As soon as I put the script to the bottom, just to be consistent. Put that down. And turn this extra ball into a prefab. Oh, but first we're also going to put a, a tag on this one, and we're going to call this tag extra ball. So add that tag as well, and then go ahead and turn the extra ball into a prefab of its own. And then you can, well, one more thing, change the sprite color or just use a completely different ball sprite. It's up to you. I'm just going to give this a bright red, just something that you can easily tell it apart. Once you've done that, update the prefab, and you can remove it from the scene because we are not going to need it in the scene. We're going to be spawning balls. We're not going to be uh, starting with one in there. Okay, cool. So now let's go into the brick script. Or actually, there's a couple of other things in the brick script. It's still asking for the smoke and coin prefabs. So we'll just attach those quickly. Isn't it fun making all these new prefabs? You need to update all these different things here. Coin and smoke. There it is. Smoke. Update that. And okay, now well, let's go into the script. Cool. So we're going to need to first of all, create a few things here. So where we where it says at the top, bool is breakable, we also want one that says is special. So we can differentiate between what is a breakable brick 
and what is a special brick. And we're just going to do a similar line of code here. We're going to say is special equals this dot tag equals special. This brick is in fact a special snowflake. And here's where we're going to differentiate because we, we have a choice. We do, we have to ask ourselves if we want this special brick to interact with this breakable count stuff. And if you recall correctly, the breakable count stuff has to do with automatically detecting how many bricks there are in a level and then ending the level when all of the breakable bricks are broken. That's a tongue twister, say that five times fast. Well, it's really a matter of choice whether we want this special brick to count towards this or not, but in my opinion, I think it's better if the breakable bricks can be left over at the end of the game and, or the end of the level, and the level will move on regardless of whether or not the breakable brick is broken, just because it's, it's a special brick. It, maybe you want to put it somewhere hard to get because it gives the player some extra bonuses, so you might not actually want it to uh, take into account any of this breakable stuff. So if you do want it to count towards the breakable stuff, you'll have to figure that part, part out on your own. It's just some minor revisions, but I'm going to go ahead and make sure the special brick does not add towards the breakable count or subtract from it either at that same point. So what else do we have to do here? Well, we actually have to make something happen when the breakable brick gets, or when the special brick gets hit. So we have here this tag that says if breakable handle hits, well, we're going to make another if statement in called if is special, then what are we going to do? We are going to have another thingy called handle special. Another thingy, very, very uh, professional term, by the way. And now we're, let's actually make this handle special method. So open curly brackets. And what are we going to do from here? Well, we have to take some of the same stuff. We Now let's look at this. Uh, this if statement has to do with whether or not the brick has, can take more than one hit. Uh, we know this breakable brick is going to die after one hit, so we don't have to worry about this if statement. We're not going to worry about subtracting the breakable count because it's not going to add to it in the first place. Uh, breaking a breakable brick is not uh, going to interact with the level manager. It's not going to uh, interfere with our loading the next level. So we're going to leave that out, but we do want it to puff smoke. We do want it to instantiate a new coin, and we do want it to destroy itself uh, once it has been hit. So we will copy these three lines of code and put them in the handle special. Cool? Okay. So now what do we need to do? Well, now we need to think about actually spawning uh, extra balls. So for this, we're going to create a new integer and call it int number of new balls. Int num new balls, and we're going to use a random dot range and you can figure out what you want to put in here. Maybe you want to expose some variables and make it public, but I'm just going to put it in the script, and I'm going to say that we can spawn between uh, two to five balls. Next, we are going to have to do something else as well, and we are going to create a for loop. And the for loop, this is how you do it. You type for, then you define an integer. So in this case, I'm going to do int i equals zero, and then you do a semicolon, and then you say i is less than number of new balls, semicolon, and then you say i plus plus. I will explain this all to you in a second. And same thing like an if statement, you do open and close curly brackets. So this to declare a for loop, we have to do three things. First, we have to declare the integer that we're actually using, which is int i, and it's, we're starting it as zero. And then we're running this loop as long as i is less than the, number, than the number of new balls. And with every increment of this loop, we are increasing i by one. And this last part is very important because if you forget to do this, you can essentially put your code into an endless loop and crash your entire game, which you probably do not want to do. So now we are going to say game object uh, new ball equals instantiate extra ball and we're going to spawn these extra balls at transform.position and then comma quaterion.identity 
as game object. Okay, so what have we done here? We have basically told it to spawn a bunch of new balls. Well, we've sort of done that. We I haven't actually added the extra balls in the inspector yet. So let's go back to Unity, go on to our special brick prefab. Pre bit. Wow, that's what I mess up on. Special brick prefab, and we are going to have to attach uh, the extra ball. Uh, why is it not showing up here? Did I not save my script? Probably. I tend to do that. Or because I actually did not uh, define it as a game object yet. That would be why. So right here, private game object where we already have a serialized field for coin, or just comma. Now let's just call it extra ball. That sounds like a good name for it. Save that. And now it should show up up here in the inspector. So let's attach our extra ball prefab onto it. Oh, and it also wants this crack sound. I forgot about that part. So let's give this special brick the crack sound too. Attach those two things and update. I should be updating the prefab itself. My bad. Uh, I mess. I will take the blame for that one. So let's try this out and see what happens. Well, that sort of works, right? You can see the extra balls there, but it's acting like uh, the other ball when it starts, which is not what we want. But if we left click, then yes, it actually does go in it and does a whole bunch of stuff. So that kind of half works. But let's get started with making it work a little better than that. So let's go into our ball script now. And we want to make sure that over here, uh, this, this part here in the update section for the ball is what controls us left clicking to launch it. Well, we don't want any of that to happen with the extra balls. We just want the extra balls to launch automatically. So we can make sure the uh, Unity recognizes uh, an extra ball from a standard ball by saying if Sorry, if game object dot tag does not equal extra ball. Cool. And now we just said if the game object dot tag is not an extra ball, if it's just a regular ball, then we're going to do this stuff. Otherwise, don't do this stuff. And this line of code here where we add the velocity to the ball, we're just going to copy this, go back and do our bricked brick script and right after we instantiate the new ball we're just going to add a new line under this here and give this ball its initial velocity and we're not going to say this dot rigid body we're going to say new ball dot rigid body 2d dot velocity is equal to this new vector too okay now let's try to run this one more time well, again, it sort of works. We get the extra balls, but it doesn't work qu perfectly quite yet. And why is this happening? Well, this might be happening because we're literally instantiating the new balls on top of each other. So we can take care of this by instead of giving it the vector 2 uh, with its velocity, the exact same velocity for all the instantiated balls, we can add a little bit of randomness to this. So we're just going to use some random dot ranges here and say new vector 2 is equal to random dot range minus 2f to 2f to for its x. And we'll do the same thing for its y. Just copy this and change the numbers around a little bit. So rather than sending all the balls in the same direction, we're going to say uh, between 7f, oops, not negative 7f just 7f and uh, about 12f. One more time, let's give this a try. And there we go. The random balls, they spawn, they go in different directions, and that's looking pretty good. Of course, we're still not 100% perfect because the extra balls are making us lose lives, which is what we don't want to happen. So now let's go into our lose collider script go down to the bottom, and where it says the trigger our tag is equals collectibles, here's what we're going to do. Uh, if it does not equal collectibles, and 
we also want to say here and trigger dot tag does not equal extra ball so it's, again we're just saying this this is a regular ball then we are going to uh, do all the losing life stuff and we're going to say down here if trigger dot tag equals collectibles or we use the two vertical lines for that trigger dot tag equals extra ball then we're going to just destroy the extra ball just like a, another game object uh, just like the coins so try that out one more time and there we go the extra balls they're falling down they're self-destructing and they're not causing us to lose any additional lives now if we keep doing this over and over it's gonna look pretty good but we might notice some problems still I uh, I wonder if I can make it happen here. The, the problem that I, I'm trying to make happen, and I know this because I've done this before, is sometimes when the balls hit each other, there we go, see how slowly the orange ball goes all of a sudden? Or sometimes it can really speed up. And this just has to do with how Unity is handling the rigid body velocity. Uh, to fix this, it's actually a little more complicated than anything uh, these videos are going to go into, or and to be perfectly honest, what I'm capable of teaching, because now we're getting into higher oh, yeah. physics stuff. See, so again, really, really slow red ball. So there is a course that teaches you how to sort of build your own physics engine on Udemy. Ben teaches it. Ben, again, Ben's the guy who shows how to make this original part of this game from scratch. So I'll put a link to that in the video description if you really want to expand your knowledge of 2D game physics. You can sign up for his course, uh, but I'm not going to go into that here. So we're just going to say that this is working properly, uh, as properly as we're going to make it here. So thanks very much for watching. And in the next video, we're going to make this special brick do something else cool as well. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hopefully subscribe. Thanks very much. See you next time.